Sir, we're at the Beverly Hills Police Department. Are you Mr. Sidney Bernstein? Yes, lucky guess. Well, sir, you have 25 unpaid parking tickets. We have a warrant for your arrest. What? 25? What 25? You what? have 25 unpaid parking tickets, sir? I, I, I pay my tickets. I pay I pay all my tickets. Sir, do you own a black Mercedes-Benz license plate and number CRL 507? 507? That's my wife's car. That's not my car. That's you my have 25 wife. unpaid yeah, parking I mean, tickets. It's under my name, but it's my wife's car. No, no, no. Bitch! Tickets have not been paid. That means you're liable. Can you cuff Mr. Bernstein, please? Cuff me! Mr. There are Bernstein. people out there with chainsaws. You're cuffing me. Well, sir, you have 25 unpaid parking tickets, and it's your car, so we have to take you in. Wait a second. I've got an idea. Is there something that I have in this office that I could hand to you and that would make you kind of forget that you're holding those uh, little pink tickets there? What are you trying to say, sir? I like you'd be holding something in that hand, and this hand you'd forget about. This hand you'd be concentrating on. That hand you'd go, what? What did I have there? I don't even remember. Oh, you mean like if I had um, two hundred dollars in this hand? Ouch! Let go of my arm. Two hundred dollars. Ouch! Please, I'm robbing you. That's what I'm doing. Here's one. Here's two. They're real crisp. Wow, what acting. <laughs> Even Gilbert says that's the worst scene in movie history. <laughs> now, was he a parrot in that? Oh, no. Robin? That was his greatest role, and I don't think he was a parrot there, though. His greatest role was when he was a parrot. Wow. Here is Gilbert Gottfried. I like when you're a parrot. He does very well as animals. Yeah. I don't like when he's Gilbert. I like when he's a parrot. People like him when there he's an animal. There are subtle differences. <laughs> Sit down. There are subtle differences between that and the parrot? Oh, yes. <laughs> he's a liar. Yeah, it's very, yeah. Uh... Yeah, the difference is you can't see Gilbert. <laughs> <laughs> Gilbert, get close to that microphone, please. Yeah, okay. I told you not to be stupid. Yeah. <laughs> Long time no see. Oh, yeah. Well, hey. Huh? Huh? hey. I understand. Uh, hey, look who's here. Gilbert Seinfeld. Yeah. Yes. Gilbert Seinfeld, yeah. I understand that you just broke up a marriage. Well, I, uh, I decided that the marriage to me you is a sacred institution. <laughs> and you know how nice institutions are. Don't you believe that, uh, were you shocked, by the way, when you read that, uh, that, uh, then now I'm talking to Gilbert. No. Yes. <laughs> You got to tell him. Because you you uh, always make fun of other comics. Yes. Don't you think it was funny that Jerry Seinfeld, who can certainly get any woman he wants, being famous and wealthy, that he always has to? It's not enough to go after a regular woman. He has to go after either a sixteen year old or a woman who's married. <clears throat> why? Why is it that is, it, it makes it more exciting? Well, well, I like to go <laughs> after eight year old girls. <laughs> Who are married? <laughs> <laughs> I must take one phone call before we begin the news. I'm sure Gilbert's plugging something. That's the only reason he'd be here. David, you're on the air. David. Or is it David? David is no longer there. I'm sorry about that. Yes. <laughs> I can't believe it. Um, since you've been here, Gilbert, what have you gotten for free? Oh, okay. Uh, no, no, actually, nothing just yet. It's so funny for me to look yes. at Gilbert because when I, you know, remember when he was in the hospital when his when he was dying, yeah, and then he had that uh, like he had his appendix removed and they couldn't even close the wound because he wasn't healing. I know he was laying there with a big pack on his belly. Yeah, and he had to wear special <laughs> special loose pants yeah. when he got out. Now I'm like I've seen him in jeans and a shirt. I'm like, wow, I guess his belly healed. <laughs> You, now he can wear regular clothes. So I'm looking at him going, good thing, because on our old show, you couldn't see all that. Yes. <laughs> on this show, you could see everything. Yeah, we removed that desk that hit <laughs> Now you can see what a piece of ass I really am. Uh, what are you doing these days? Are you dating anyone? Oh, yes. Oh, really? Are you? Yeah, I'm just getting laid like crazy. I bet you are. You know, yeah. he does get yes. laid. Because every time we uh, open up the phones, we hear from girls who have had sex with him. Well, let's do it today. I want to hear from him. And you know what? Benji tried to pre-interview Gilbert. Yeah. So, like, he'd say to Gilbert, like, um, hey, Gilbert, uh, like, when you were in high school, who were your heroes? And he goes, I prefer not to speak about anything that happened to me before I was 20 years old. Really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, you want to know my first kiss? 
Yeah. <laughs> he hasn't had it yet. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> that must have been some upbringing. Uh, yes. Hmm. I think he's very scarred. Well, we went to the hospital. We saw his mom and his mother sitting there with him, and it looked like they were all strangers. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody really, I them. thought the wrong family had walked into Gilbert's room and uh, they were too embarrassed to tell him. Because Gilbert's like this to me. He goes, could you? Buy me some pajamas that have elastic so my belly wound won't hurt. And I go, your mom was just here. Why don't you ask her? He had a mom, a sister. Is, you oh, can't call them. Oh, is that you and my mother? <laughs> he tries to pretend it's not his mother. Yes. He didn't even introduce oh. us. No. <laughs> and every once in a while, his mother might move or something. He's like, mom, mom. Don't, yeah, move. Yeah. don't move. Yeah. Don't move. <laughs> you are strange, man. You know what? If you ever did a TV special yeah. with your mother yeah. and your sister... It would be the greatest television special ever. Everyone would tune in, and you would be a multi-billionaire. Gilbert yeah. Godfrey, this is your life. It would be. Um, I would do Gilbert Godfrey, this is your life. I would like to host it. Yes. <laughs> and it would be. It would be the totally serious Can we Gilbert. Do that for the CBS show. Oh, it would blow away that Art Crumb special. <laughs> <laughs> it would be unbelievable. <laughs> But uh, you would never do that, right? You do not want to yeah. reveal anything about your personal life. Yeah, no. Right. no. All right, it's too painful. Yeah, when I was in the hospital, that's when I was through my gr old Groucho period. Right. He was yes. like, he was so... He was giving up show business. He, 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 yeah. he, I swear Gilbert turned me and goes, I'm going to give up show business. What is the point? <laughs> I'm going to help starving children. Yeah, and he was like, I don't know the point anymore. Even if I do get better. What am I really doing with my life? I went, oh, right. I, actually, when I was there, I sounded like the uh, senile Groucho. <laughs> yeah, you uh, did. You know, when I worked with Harpo, <laughs> and we were doing, I think it was a day at the circus. <laughs> and Harpo would play the harp. That's why we would call him Harpo. I used to watch those shows when Groucho was a real, because I loved the March Brothers. With the beret. <laughs> And, and they'd say, like, are? tonight on Dick Cavett, oh, those Groucho are Marx. Yes. And you get all excited because Groucho was going to come out, and you expect that really funny guy to come out. Or the and, guy from You Bet Your Life, right. anything. Yeah. Then this old, old guy in a beret, way too skinny, would walk out, and he could barely walk. And he still had, like, a, he sort of looked a little like Groucho. He could give you that look. Yeah, and he sounded a little like Groucho. Teeny mustache. Yeah. yeah, and, like, Dick Cavett was ready to catch him in case he <laughs> fell. And everyone's kissing his ass. And then Groucho would feel real good and go into long, boring stories, and he'd be like, almost. So we worked in Kansas, <laughs> and this was we, I was staying in a room with Chico, and, uh, and Zeppo would try to show up, Kevin knew Zippo nothing about interrupting, wore a hat, <laughs> and the hats were what you wore back then, <laughs> when your head was cold. <laughs> And Cabot would be like, Cabot yeah. would let him go way too long, because yeah. Cabot doesn't interrupt anyway. Yeah. You know, he's like an intellectual. He just and, lets him go on. And he loves to fawn over Groucho, because he wants to have a personal relationship with Groucho. And it's a big coup to get Groucho to come out of a stupid retirement yes. home, you know, and do a television show. So Cabot would devote the whole hour to him. <laughs> and you'd have an hour of that? Yeah, it'd be insufferable. And and then they, they used to, on other shows, they would, like, have, like, obviously prepared questions that he could do a funny right. uh, answer to. <laughs> like, what do you mean? You know, like, like they would go uh so uh groucho do you ever go fishing <laughs> well that sounds awfully fishy to me <laughs> <laughs> oh <laughs> he's quicker than ever right take him an, <laughs> yeah. would take him an hour to get that <laughs> sentence out uh so groucho do you ever like eating walnuts no oh, they drive me Nuts. <laughs> oh, boy, he just thought of that on his own. <laughs> wow. What a well, retort. You know, you're, Groucho, you're just as sharp as ever, really. Uh, why am I sharp? I'm not an attack. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> oh, he just thought of that. You got a mind like a rocket ship. <laughs> and then the thank host you. would have it's to... It's pretty spacey. Yeah, thank you. And then the host would have to laugh way too hard. Oh, yeah. That's something right, that yeah. wasn't funny. They'd be feeling ah <laughs> nuts. Yeah, slapping their knees and everything. <laughs> yeah, that's Groucho. You're killing me. You're, you're nuts. And then Groucho would always get up to go to the piano to sing one of his songs. I once knew a woman who couldn't spell cat. Her face was as ugly as since. In winter, she always wore last summer's hat. And a size 11 <laughs> shoe was a pinch. <laughs> and, and then to, when he started to lose his voice, that's when it got deeper. Right, right. You know. But, oh, how that woman could cook. 
<laughs> a lot of those old Baltimore guys, a lot like George Burns, would love to sing on George shows. George Burns, oh, it always. Oh, I'd love to call you him. Rose Deer. Yeah. I'd love to call you Rose Deer, but Rose fades away. Rose died in wintertime fears. <laughs> I'd love to call you Daisy, but Daisy always tell what sweet it's like to whisper in your ear. <laughs> and then, and then, and then, then the other the person in the back would come out, and then they would wave flowers. And do you, do you, as a kid, I would always wonder, how do these guys get famous? They're not. They're the least funny people on the planet. And it's nothing. Into, I mean, and they don't even have the ability to know that they're boring. People would pump them up. I know. See, see, we would go out and there would be a magic act, and then, and then, then I would sing the song. Right. I once knew a woman who couldn't spell cat. <laughs> Gracie was the funny yeah. one. Gracie was always, always funny. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. Funny part of the act died. Yeah, I mean, I used to watch, because oh, all I ever did as a kid, my sport was watching television Those and getting high. Oh, yeah. yeah, so, I mean, you know, that was it. I didn't go out and have my friends. My brother was a lazy kid. Ten days old, where's all the work you did? Word of song entirely wrong. <laughs> Ah, what used to crack me up about George Burns was they'd say, oh, sing a song for us, George. And George would go, no, 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 I can't sing anymore. I can't sing anymore. Yeah. And then he'd have to beg, and the audience would have to applaud, and then he'd do that. Then he'd shuffle over to the piano. <laughs> this is my, and it was obviously all set up because the piano player was right, there. Right. And then there was that scandal because Groucho was saying bad things about George Burns. Say, was he really? I, I don't remember that yeah, one. He did Radio City. Right. He was going... I've uh, got a lot more people in Radio City than George Bynes. <laughs> Bynes couldn't get anyone in there. Uh, right. And I was able. And, and Burns was mad at that. <laughs> <laughs> He's old feud. I missed that one. That's the one thing I missed. <laughs> Oh, man. And then they, those were the top guys. Then you had old guys like George Jessel, who were complete boobs. <laughs> and, like, you didn't even know why they were famous. You didn't it know why George was wonderful when I worked with uh, Tallulah Bankhead. Right. He, he, he said, where did you work with Tallulah Bankhead? I worked with Tallulah Bankhead. This was many years ago. <laughs> we, uh, you know, Marv, Tallulah, well, she's uh, still a beautiful woman today, even though she's been dead. For Meanwhile, years. George Jessup was working funerals in Brooklyn. He wasn't with Tallulah Bankhead. That's what he was famous for. I know, yeah, for going I to funerals. I always used to ask, why is this guy on the talk shows? Yeah, I've never seen him anywhere. He waited on Tallulah's table. Be on any shows. Oh, and then they used to have uh, Gypsy Rose Lee on Merv Griffin. She would get, yeah, like, yeah. and you were Wait, like I was a kid and I go, oh my God, the real Gypsy Rosalie, the real stripper. Yeah. And now I'm getting ready to like pull my pants yeah. down and I want to be alone oh. when she comes on because they promo it all day. And then all of a sudden this 900 year old bag would walk out talking about stripping. She looked like a caricature of Lucy. I'd rather see my mom strip. She had like these big brown teeth. Yeah. She, oh, she was one of those people who drew outside the lines of her lips. Oh, yeah. Lips. Yeah. yeah they, you know, she was she what, draw a mouth on. She's what strippers <laughs> really become. A lot of women got turned off to stripping after that. Oh. Yeah. And then she would always, she was one of those that thought it was like an, an art form. Right. She'd yeah. She'd gone, well, you know, in my day, <laughs> we didn't, uh, we didn't uh, strip. It wasn't an idea of sexual turn <laughs> What we did was an art form. It was a dance art right. form. Right. Yeah, like, like, like stripping was different back right. then. Said, uh, and I understand it used to take her an hour to take off a glove. Her breast dragged on the floor. <laughs> The, the kings and the intelligentsia would watch strippers back then. We were not strippers. We were uh, erotic dancers. Yes, yeah, she would. Go, I remember she'd go and go, yo, Merv. <laughs> back then, I could spend an hour taking off one glove, and that would turn the men on. It's, it, it, yeah, right. And that's that's how you do it. It's suggested suggestion rather than showing it off. <laughs> And then they would also have uh, Mom's Mabel. <laughs> yeah, she was always on. Uh, she was a real mess. Yeah. You know, Mabel, I, I have a joke about my husband died. <laughs> she's another one that takes an hour to get out the joke. And it's never funny, but you got to laugh way too hard because she's an old black woman. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, an old black woman with no teeth. Right. So you had to look you know, uh, uh, Oh, so my husband. <laughs> Come on, that was funny. <laughs> he said he wanted to be buried. And, and he would come out and kill me. So I buried him 
upside down. <laughs> <laughs> and every, that was it. You know, you yeah. didn't want to show you were racist by right. not laughing. Right, and you don't or, even know what she's talking I about. Old. Yeah. I laughed at mom's marriage. And she was so old that she sat down on the couch and he's like, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, uh. Mother, an awful teacher. Hmm. I remember one mom's maybe just awful, awful, awful teacher. I would like to do a song Merb. today, man. <laughs> Sonny, there's the name. There's the name. It's the day of And then she used to do a little dance. Yeah, yeah, dance. Oh, she, had that, big, that was... she had big shoes and big feet. That, that was the thing with both uh, George Burns and Moms Mabley. Yeah, they had to do a little dance. And and just if they could stand up, that was How enough. Yeah, dance. People would applaud. Yes. <laughs> I go, that ain't dancing, that's standing. Yes. <laughs> what is that? That's like shuffling before a stroke. Oh, yeah. But yeah. I thought she was funny. No. <laughs> no. James Cagney started to sound like Groucho Marx after his stroke. What did he sound like? I don't remember. Was, let me see if I can. <laughs> he, did that, he did that TV movie. With. Uh, uh, Matthew Broderick? Oh, no, yes. Uh, yeah. Was he played Matthew? a fighter. Yeah. 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 Was Matthew Broderick? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, was James Cagney. Oh, when Fox. everyone gets old, they get so slow. and they yeah. get my... He also he sounded like Groucho, but it was more like, I, you know, I'm a tough guy. <laughs> <laughs> I remember him coming out. It was to be like a big deal that James Cagney was finally going to do a television. Yeah, he looked horrible. Yeah, he looked horrible. He was all fat and he, his chins were hanging over his shirt. He couldn't make out a word he was saying. It was really Stewart. funny because he stayed out of the limelight for years. He had a stroke. He started yeah. working. Yes. <laughs> Same with Groucho. Oh, I can't get to the time. I doing movies. Isn't there anybody who can keep these guys off television? Yes. Jimmy, Jimmy Stewart used to go on Carson all the time, oh. and I never understood why oh, Carson liked poems. him. Yeah, but the poems. <laughs> and the poems went on way too long. I had a dog, Bo, and Bo ran in the house. He chased the mouse. <laughs> and then it was like, oh, that's wonderful. And Carson used to be into it. My favorite guest is Jimmy Stewart. When he does those poems, I, I, I when, when he does him. those poems, uh, yeah. you forget that he's senile. <laughs> you really forget, you forget like, that he should have been dead yeah. about 50 years ago. Yeah. You know who that's happened to now? Barney Five. Oh, oh yeah. We had, a, we, interviewed, uh, we had a tape oh, of Don Knotts. No. <laughs> I, wish I, could, I wish I had those tapes. Yeah, right really now. Gilbert you didn't hear that, did you? Oh, no. Oh, uh, he's like, he's like oh. you know. Oh, I can't even do it. It's just so good. It's just so good. <laughs> Those shows are like what we do. You know the time passed me by. Times passed by. <laughs> Haven't spoken to Abby in a while. Doesn't even sound like Barney Fife anymore. <laughs> He's two days away from poetry. <laughs> he had a show. Uh, you done? Uh, you don't have any poems for us? Uh, Jimmy Stewart's with us tonight, and uh, Jimmy, you agreed uh, to give us one of your poems. Holmes, is that right? Uh, I drink some water because I honor. I I have a daughter. Oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> ah, very oh, good. That is one. Isn't that great, Ed? And it's so touchy. Very touchy. <laughs> <laughs> Johnny was such a load. Did you hate Johnny? Oh, I yes. hated Johnny. Yeah. And, and did you think it was odd how, like, he had, like, just with comedians, because he used to be a comedian, only some of those guys could sit down oh, on the couch. I, what, what the, mo the most horrible thing is at comedy clubs, mm. it always, whenever there was a comic they knew on, everyone sat around the TV. Right. When they were on doing the Tonight Show, <laughs> and they go, "Oh, you know, Johnny scratched his head." Yeah, you know what that, you know what that means. means. Yeah, you let, you let him sit on the couch, and Johnny yeah. is such a prick. Yeah, that you wouldn't let you know. Uh, with the comedians, if they do exceptionally well, I'll ask them to sit down on the couch. <laughs> That's how you know they've done well. Well, and the other thing, the other move was if they didn't do well enough to get on the couch, you have to go back to Johnny for his reaction, and right. he said. Good stuff. Good stuff. Oh, yeah. Good okay. stuff. Yeah, and there were like certain levels. There was good stuff, very clever. Hey, Johnny rubbed his nose. Look it yeah. up. What does it mean? Oh, yes. Look it up in the book. Oh. But every bimbo who never did a thing in the world with big breasts was yes. able to sit down next to right Johnny away. and suck oh, right up to him. Away. It was just unbelievable. <laughs> yeah. I remember because David Brenner came on my show one time, and Johnny had let him sit next to him, and you know, it was his first time. That immediately changed David Brenner's career. Yeah. And he's like, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. 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 that was the moment. That was the moment in my life. 
you think Carson was magical, aren't we? <laughs> you could just do a joke on Carson, and in the first minute, you know that the first time I did the Tonight Show, I had the, the head of Universal Studios run up to me and say, I'm going to make you a star. And that's why I had not even finished my act yet. He had run up to me. Right. The same thing with my dear, damn friend, uh, Freddy Prince. Right. I got... God, I miss him. <laughs> you miss Freddie Prince. It was such a tragedy. Same thing happened to you and Freddie Prince. Yeah, the same thing. The same guy. Head of Universal yeah, called the immediately. Head of Unif I think with him it was a head of Paramount. <laughs> and he had just, they had just introduced him. He had, but he was magical. He was really a magical kid. Magical performer, Freddie Prince. He was magical. <laughs> <laughs> but I heard you never met Freddie. No, oh, I, uh, well, no, but uh, what I've read about him, he was, he was magical. But it changed your career when Johnny let you sit down. Yes, and right. now, you know, after all these years, now I just turned 32. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so you're feeling your age. Yeah, I'm right, feeling my right, age. Right. I just turned 32, and I, I feel older now. <laughs> you're more mature. <laughs> and you see Johnny a lot even to this day? To this day. You I wake up to see Johnny Malibu? I wake up in the middle of the night and see him. Hey. In your dream. He jumps jones up and goes, I never liked you. <laughs> and I understand you called Johnny before you did your talk show. You got your own talk show, uh, didn't you, for, for a couple of weeks? I, I called him. He told me to go after myself. <laughs> he did. And then he hung up the phone. He told you to, to pursue your dream. Yes. He told me, oh, not then. I'm sorry. He told me to pursue my dream. Right. Okay. Well, uh, Gilbert Gottfried is with us. <laughs> and uh, we have to do the news. We have a time constraint today. Whenever you're here, we have a time constraint. Oh, I got to limit you. <laughs> right. <laughs> Um, oh, God, I'd love to talk to you about, I mean, even like Johnny Carson's feud with Joan Rivers, that was the funniest. Yeah. Like, Johnny's such a dick. Like, no one else is allowed to do a talk show. Still, Johnny, he's not speaking to her. Yeah, not speaking to her. 20 years. You know, what I resented was, we had <laughs> given her a contract, and Joan uh, mis mis misused me. <laughs> How's that, Johnny? You wacko. We gave her a venue. We gave her the venue. I remember everyone hated Joan Rivers because she started performing and they felt she performed like it. she didn't give it enough time after her husband died. Yeah. 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 yeah that right. was a big scandal. Let me, t let me say something. Yeah. I'm a married man. I love my wife. But if she died, I'd be dating tomorrow. <laughs> Joan was even living with that guy. Right. Joan was like divorced yeah. from him. Yes. And she's crying out loud. And she started performing too soon. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You can't, you can't perform. Yeah. You know, that's the most sensible thing to do. I'd be doing shtick at the wake. Oh, no. <laughs> all right. Let me take a break. Yes, what? Let's not get into Joan's movie about it where she rolled all over Edgar's clothes. Oh, that, <laughs> that was great. We oh, get, what a fantastic film. Why don't we get a copy of that and just oh, talk over great. it? Oh, why don't we uh, get that Joan Rivers yes. film yeah. and talk over it and stuff one day on the show? Yeah, her and her daughter as themselves. Yeah, right. That was the oh, best. Oh, and how they couldn't get into the to the synagogue at one point. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. The Jews wouldn't let her in because she didn't have a ticket. Uh, <laughs> she couldn't oh, get into prestigious synagogue. <laughs> they needed a parrot in that thing. <laughs> Yeah, the parrot should have been Joan's sidekick. Listen to this. Uh, Gilbert Gottfried may be one of the funniest comics I can think yeah. of on the planet. Will be at Caroline's Comedy Club tomorrow and Saturday. To rarely order... performs now. Rarely will he perform. Rarely. Rarely. Unless you know, he needs money. I'm giving up all my old material. Is that right, Jerry? Yeah, I've decided to quit my old material and devote my life to having sex with two-year-old girls. <laughs> oh, oh. Oh. Jerry doesn't think it's funny. Jerry doesn't think it's funny. He, he Robin sees him every day, yes. and Jerry turns his head and won't look at Robin. It's I'm not talking thing. to her. Yeah, because we, we made fun of the fact that he was dating a 16-year-old. I do not like that colored woman <laughs> or the man she works for. <laughs> I am against it. But what did you think as a comic you would think that was funny? Yes. <laughs> yeah, of course. Come on, he would have been making jokes if it was anybody else. Oh, yes. If you need to order uh, Gilbert tickets and Caroline's, you got to call fast. 212-757-4100 because there's only like thousands left. Oh, what? 212. <laughs> 212-757-4100. <laughs> 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 257-4100. We'll be back with the news right after this. Howard Stern.
Howard Stern Show. Hey, let me just tell you about Daytech Online. I'm having too good a time with Gilbert. The stock market has been climbing for the last few business days. Finally, some relief, Gilbert. <laughs> yeah, Gilbert's in the stock market, isn't he? Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> he's afraid to even call the stock market. <laughs> he won't even call downstairs for an ambulance. No, he's afraid they'll take his money. I'm, I'm, I'm dying, but I'm afraid to call the ambulance. Do I have to tip them? I don't want it to be on the front page of the post. <laughs> oh, no, I can't <laughs> call 911. That's when I knew you were delusional. I, I, I finally, like about ten years later, made like a little mention in the post. Yeah, yeah, After barely. Bill Hartman For died. a moment, he thought he was Madonna. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I, I didn't want to call the ambulance because I was afraid I'd end up on the front page of the paper. Three months later, he calls me. Could you mention that I'm yeah. in the hospital? <laughs> Nobody noticed. Nobody seems to notice. Uh, Daytech charges only nine ninety nine per online trade, up to 5,000 shares. And they're so quick. If your marketable order is in pro Do you have a computer yet? No. This is fantastic. You can fantastic. order. You can order your all your uh, stocks stuff right over the computer. It's unbelievable. Trade and track your stocks and mutual funds 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and you can get all the research and news you need to make investment decisions. You think Gilbert would have a computer because like, he has nothing to do all day? Yeah. I wrote a book about computers. Be informed. You should be on the internet for sure. www.daytech.com. That's D-A-T-E-K.com. A Daytech Online member, NASD, SIPC, and the Boston Stock Exchange. This is Dracul Catherine. And you're listening to the Howard Stern Show. <laughs> All right, Dracula Gottfried is with us. Gilbert Gottfried at Caroline's Comedy Club tomorrow and Saturday. If you want to order tickets, act quickly. Call 212-757-4100. Everybody trying to get in there. Yeah. So, um, you know, there's so much to talk to Gilbert about. We've got to have him back and in. There's so much in the news. In the news. I mean, I want to tell you what we talked about during the commercial, but... You know, it's crazy, Rob. Never get through anything. We, we need to, we need 17 hours for this Why show. Why did Gilbert come in so late? Why did you come in so late, you <laughs> loafer? Oh, well, well, I I get up and run. Is that oh, what it is? You ex yeah. exercise? Yeah. I was telling them all the Ratso stories. Oh, great. About the marine toilet paper. <laughs> oh man, I'm dying to know whatever happened between Gilbert and Amy Heckerling's 12 year old daughter. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> he cursed out that 12 year old. Is that still going on? Uh, sometimes. Really? Do they still call you? <laughs> Have you been to dinner lately? Oh, no. No, they <laughs> haven't invited me back for dinner. <laughs> yeah, Amy's movie kind of tanked the Roxbury boys. Oh, yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He's kind of happy, He's kind of happy well, about I, that. I love when comedies bomb. <laughs> right. I love when any movie bombs. Me too. Yeah. Because I get jealous when yeah. they're successful. and like I hate when Jim Carrey does well. Yeah. <laughs> I think he's a great talent, but I'd like to see him have a little failure in his life. It's horrible. It's just like when I hear about somebody who has like a drug problem. Right. I'm always upset if it ends with them like getting off drugs. I know. You I, want them to sink. Yeah. And yeah. die. I hate when it's like a tale of courage. Then it's like I turn away. Yeah. <laughs> You're so low. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's do some news with yeah. you, Gilbert. Because I don't know where to start, Howard. There's so many. Why don't you ask Gilbert for advice? Yes. <laughs> well, I have to tell you about this new yes. fetish that I've discovered. I had never heard of this one before. I bet you Gilbert's done it. Wiping your ass and keeping the toilet safe. <laughs> <laughs> it's called apodomenophilia. Do you know what that is? Apodomenophilia. Yes, I yes, suffer from yeah. it. Yes. Yeah, I know Gilbert, that. you have that, don't you? Yes. Isn't that where you uh, remove your appendix and it never heals? Yes. But. Well, that's very close. Really? Oh. It's a, a fetish where people want a part of their body amputated. Ooh. I've heard of this. You mm, have? That's why. I wish they'd amputate my nose. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's, no, that's I, I know about stuff. this because in San Diego, there's a doctor on no. trial for murder because he cut off a guy's leg that was perfectly healthy because the guy wanted it cut off. Right. And then he died. Oh, my. Hmm. It was for cosmetic surgery. In other words, he felt he'd look better without a leg. It's yeah. supposed to be some kind of a sexual thing. Wow. That you want to get your leg cut off. What doctor would do that? Oh, a doctor who's also been in trouble for performing uh, operations to change people's sex and every other kind of thing. Dr. Bombay. <laughs> <laughs> Call Dr. Bombay. Uh, we need our legs removed. Oh, that was that... that, that Bewitched. English. Yeah. Yeah, Dr. Bombay. Yes. Dun -dun 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 Dr. Bombay. This guy, Philip Bondi, was a 79-year-old guy from Manhattan's upper... And who was Paul uh, Lynn's character? East Side. <laughs> to have his left leg amputated at a Mexican clinic to fulfill a lifelong fetish. 
This bizarre sexual drive known medically as apotomenophilia or a desire to have a limb removed was described by Greg Firth, who said he backed out of having the operation. Right. And guess how these people connect with each other? How? Over the Internet. Of course. <laughs> that Internet is dangerous. I tell you. Now all these people can contact each other and they find friends. Yeah, and they and they talk each other into doing stuff. Right. So this guy paid money for the operation and then backed out at the last minute. So his friend said, I'll do it, and jumped on the Imagine table. wanting to remove your leg. Oh, maybe his pants were too long. Yeah, you sound like a Groucho. Maybe you oh, should that like Groucho. Pants were too long. <laughs> <laughs> told in detail of his uh, friend Bondi's compulsion, which he shared, and how it led them to John Ronald Brown, Brown a 75-year-old former doctor from San Diego. Apparently, the guy just cut off the guy's leg in a hotel room <laughs> in Mexico. And they were going to tell his family that he got into an accident down in Tijuana, and that's why he lost his leg. But the guy wind, wound up, you know, getting gangrene and dying. And that's odd, because Mexico is such an advanced country. <laughs> Gilbert, yeah. avoid your own voice. Yes, exactly. Avoid <laughs> his characters. And, you know, they such discovered... an advanced country. <laughs> they found all these uh, appetizing drugs in the room and when, lots of bloody when I was towels in Mexico, and so forth. Oh. It was really a I mess. was going to say would have hookers. Hookers in Mexico. Yes. yes. Right. Crack Investigators up. who uh, were looking we into Dr. Brown's, sex. I got to go on. <laughs> <laughs> you picked the wrong day to have to get out of here. And, and they went to Dr. Brown's San Ysidro apartment. What? <laughs> they found bloody towel sheets and mattresses, as well as anesthetizing drugs. Investigators said they also found records of videotapes of sex change operations. Mm. After a multi-state follow-up did, did you have a sex change operation? <laughs> also so, now what's your name now? Cy. No, so you idiot. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go ahead, Robin. He was charged now, with... now you are hurt. Go, but we're in a rush, were you? He was charged with what? injuring eight people. Will you get a lawyer now? Oh, was changed. What will a lawyer do? So, oh, you can't, huh? <laughs> no, it's, it's impossible. His voice is so out loud. Out of control. <laughs> Oh boy! <laughs> Did you see in the paper today that Frank Gifford is finally apologizing? Listen to this, Gilbert. Frank Gifford is apologizing to Kathy Lee for that tryst he had in a hotel room. It's in the I uh, am sorry. Daily News today. <laughs> he says that uh, meeting Susan Johnson in a hotel room was the stupidest thing he's ever done. No, I don't the know. first thing was marrying her. Yeah, that was the dumbest thing, <laughs> not knowing that you want to fool around. He apologized for the pain he's caused his wife, Kathy Lee, and said the marriage sorry. is much stronger now. I was very foolish, very stupid, and fortunately I was married to a wonderful woman who knew that she was commanded to forgive me. That's what he told Larry King last night. Mm. But he said the Bible mm. did not uh. demand his wife to forget his well-publicized transgression. we got to get tape of that. Much of the media storm was driven by the fact that Kathy Lee, this is their conjecture, is the co-host of the syndicated live with Regis and Kathy Lee, and had paraded her marriage on TV and in books as the nation's most perfect. Right, that's what was so funny about it. Gifford said the couple has patched up the once storybook union. We have a love affair, he said. Mm -hmm. Gifford said he promised <laughs> Kathy Lee that he will spend the rest of his life trying to be the man that he th uh, she thought he was. <laughs> Good luck. His voice quavering. This is why we have to get it. Mm -hmm. I just about lost the most important thing in my uh, life. And that is a woman I love very much. Lost I, mm -hmm. oh. I lost <laughs> the most important woman. Here my life. <laughs> hey, Gilbert, did you sleep with a woman who claimed to be a woman and then was a man? Oh, Never. Oh, no. <laughs> All right, there's a post-op transsexual on the phone who says she can prove she slept with Gilbert, and Gilbert oh, okay. threw her out of the hotel room when he found out. Okay. Is there any truth to this? No. How can no? she prove it? I don't know. I How can it. you prove it, Karen? Hello? Yes, yeah. Um, we were at Caroline's a couple years ago. <laughs> yes. And um, after the show, we started having drinks. I'm, I had long blonde hair. I had my breast. I had everything except I still had the penis. And um, <laughs> we were... We were <laughs> uh, Gilbert, and don't laugh because you have to remember this. We went back to the hotel room and we started a kiss. He took my top off. Oh, my. Um, he was feeling on me. And then before we went any further, I told him, Gilbert, I have to tell you something. He said, what is it? I said, one, two, three, four, five. I'm a guy. Just yeah. like that. 
and he looked at me and he was like in shock, sweating. It was. <laughs> it was. He, well, how can you prove this? Gilbert says well, it never happened. It was at the Sheridan Manhattan, I think it's called. He would never stay yeah. there. It cost too much money. Why, why would I stay at a hotel? He's got an apartment. Manhattan. That's where he took me. And, and when I told you, you were laughing. You said you're kidding, right? I said absolutely not. And, uh, all right, well, there's no way to prove plus, this, Robin. Plus, plus no if, if I brought her up, even if she had a penis, I would have said, well, all right. Yeah. Uh, by the way, I, I believe it. So yeah. <laughs> okay. Robin, go ahead. Anyway, Frank Gifford is contrite. And we I love that. We will take on uh, Larry King. We're going to get that for tomorrow. He and says, it was a big penis, too. <laughs> Relax. He says that he found oh. God through this whole experience. Mm -hmm. He said, you might call it foxhole Christianity, but I really found the God I thought I knew. He better find God. He's at home with a holy roller. For what God. happened to me was an amazing... Amazing spiritual experience that has made me stronger. Yeah. And he also attacked the tarring of his wife as a sweatshop queen after it was learned that Walmart clothing line, the Walmart clothing line she endorsed was sewn by poorly paid immigrants in Manhattan sweatshops. I don't know. It's never the same between a, a man and his wife when uh, once she catches him cheating. Sometimes it's better. Really? They can actually regain that love and trust. Really? Sure. Maybe I should go out and cheat. Right. Yeah, you know, maybe maybe that's what's missing. <laughs> I need a little of that. Did you see that Montel Williams has admitted that he had uh, double mastectomy? What is he, a chick? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. On a recent show about young breast cancer survivors, Montel Williams revealed that he had a double mastectomy at the age of 19. No kidding. Yeah. The 42-year-old... Gilbert's all confused. <laughs> yeah. he's, he's, he's all, what? He has what? He's, he's, he's got confusion. <laughs> so guys can get breast cancer over that. Oh, yes. Yeah. He You'll get it. Yeah, he okay, I will. <laughs> yeah, look at what Montel has to say. While I was in the Marines... Mm. I yeah. Yeah, what's I Gilbert going to say when he gets it? <laughs> <laughs> While I was in a hotel with a transsexual... Yes, man. <laughs> man. Right. He says that he discovered a lump... In his chest, and he uh, had both of his breasts removed. <laughs> <laughs> they later discovered that the, the lump was benign. Oh. Loser. <laughs> <laughs> and a spokesperson for his show says he never had reconstructive surgery. I've seen him with his shirt off. He built himself up through workouts. Mm. <laughs> I'm so for Gilbert. <laughs> <laughs> On uh, Saturday, I should get my breast remote. <laughs> when he hosted a show featuring Carol M. Baldwin, who is the mother right. of the Baldwin brothers, and the um, does your mother do any charity work, uh, Gilbert? Does she like Carol Baldwin? Uh, yes. Uh, yeah, I, I get together with my ten other brothers. <laughs> right. <laughs> They're all in show business. Right. Right. Actually, they were at a gala. All right. And uh, they were raising funds for breast cancer research. Yes. Yes. So Montel is a yes. survivor. Wow. Did your mom ever come to your shows to see your uh, No. No. You don't allow it? <laughs> Have they ever seen you perform? Your parents? Uh, just on TV. I see. Yeah. Gilbert, what are you doing? <laughs> Not I funny. didn't have to talk that way. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> There's something badly off with that. Did you start performing as a 15-year-old? Yes. 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 You will admit yes. to that. Did you sneak out of the house? Uh, no. Your mother allowed it. Yeah, yeah. I think they were glad. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine that. A young Gilbert at 15. Yeah. His I comedy can't. must have been very pure. <laughs> the funny thing is he looked just like he does now. Yeah. <laughs> he got laid more when he was 15. Yes. <laughs> Hurricane uh, Mitch is yes. on its way to the Yucatan Peninsula and uh, oh. Belize and Honduras. Oh. So uh, a hurricane watch is in effect, and people in those areas are fleeing. Here's um, James Free, who is that hurricane expert, to explain where Mitch is located right now. Gilbert, do you want to know where Mitch is? Yes. James Free, Robin? Yes, number uh, one. James Free is number one. Here we go. The center of Hurricane Mitch was located about 35 miles north of the coast of Honduras, hmm. yes. or very near the island of Guan Guanaja. Oh. Hurricane has moved very little during the past several hours. Well, then I closed my pool. <laughs> I don't think it's going to actually cause you any problems, Al. Right. Might cause Ratso problems. Isn't he on the water and with a marine toilet? <laughs> oh. A $70,000 home? <laughs> 
Frisalic. I don't remember uh, eating that. Oh, Trinity Space Flight Center oh. says that they don't expect <laughs> Mitch to be a factor in. <laughs> we'll uh, see. Senator John, or former Senator John I don't Glenn, eat peanuts. Returning to space, number seven. <laughs> Senator John Glenn is returning to space? Yes, and this is Ed Pacelic. Uh, <laughs> Hurricane Mitch is actually drifting toward the west, southwest. You know, it had been drifting kind of west, northwestward, so it's getting even farther away from us. And in addition, uh, high pressure is dumping down into the area. <laughs> Senator John Glenn says Thursday's launch will be like reliving a dream. It's like an insane asylum in here. I'm ignoring you and just going on. All these years, I'd always hoped I'd be able to go back up again, but through this, I really had no uh, realistic hopes that that would happen. But. Oh, pardon me. What, the, what actually occurred was that, uh, age became an advantage instead of a disadvantage. But the gravity holds it back in. <laughs> <laughs> they say it's been a joy to work with Senator Glenn, and he's supposed to be able to handle everything that's going to happen to him in space. It must be very exciting for the other astronauts to be with such a seasoned professional. <laughs> President Clinton's credibility on Social Security has been questioned, but now he's coming out and talking about how he feels about the system and what he plans to do about it. He says he's going to keep in mind the obstacles to secure old age for women when he and lawmakers sit down to talk about Social Security's future at a White House conference in December. Mr. Clinton says women have a special concern. Number three. Women are very special in me. I have a special concern. The hard fact remains that too many retired women, after providing for... I banged all the women at the conference. ...families are having trouble providing for themselves. The reason we have Senator Glenn going up in space is so we can study the diarrhea in zero gravity. <laughs> President Clinton says uh, he has a plan to help women get more out of Social Security. I am proposing that families be given the choice to receive less of their pension when both spouses are living, leaving more for the surviving spouse. If the breadwinner dies, uh, dies. That should help keep elderly women. And if the breadwinner dies, I can have sex with her. <laughs> out of poverty in their twilight years. I like retired women because they can take their teeth out. <laughs> It's just funny when the president starts talking about women now and how yeah. he's going to take care of them. I like to take care yeah, of my baby. women. I like to buy them books of poetry. I do. I like Twilight. Speaking of women, they say that more women <laughs> yes. than men die of heart attacks. And their That's first right. heart attack is usually more severe than the heart attack suffered by men. Many times women don't even recognize that they're having a heart attack because they have different symptoms than men. It's more than just chest pain. Here's Dr. Elizabeth Ross to uh, tell us what it's like for women having a heart attack. I like when my girlfriends have heart attacks because there's less evidence. <laughs> Won't get caught. Breathlessness or severe fatigue. Oh. Um, back pain oh. or shoulder pain may be signs of heart disease Talk in women. Slower. Oh. <laughs> Talk about anal sex. Oh. <laughs> a new study says first heart attacks are deadlier for women. Uh, it may be biology, not age, or other health problems that factor into the high mortality rate for women. Here's Dr. Ross again. This study suggests that there may be some differences and that first heart attacks may be more... Dead broads tell no tales. <laughs> ...in women than in men. Right. Right, Gilbert? Sometimes I chop the legs off. I'm into that. Do you know what that's called? A menoplasteria. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. 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 <laughs> Monica, eat your cyanide. <laughs> Here, swallow 92 caffeine pills. <laughs> Athena Roussel is one of the richest little girls in the world. She's 13 she's years old. She's a good old, girl. And she's going to be on 2020 tonight. All right. Oh, I had sex with her. All of her life. <laughs> people have been squabbling over money. Who are these her. people? Right oh, now, man. her father, who was... Uh, 
her mother's ex-husband at the time of her death, Thierry Roussel, is fighting to become to gain more control of Athena's fortune. She says mm. she has I had novel... sex with her oh, and it no. broke up her parents. <laughs> <laughs> she has a novel approach to uh, all of these problems. She'd like to burn the money. Oh. It's nothing but a problem to her. <laughs> oh, burns money. <laughs> <laughs> One of her friends or a trustee says Athena sees it as an a, a ability to become like everybody else if she wasn't so wealthy. No Jew would burn money. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I wish she'd burn Monica. <laughs> I would burn money. It would be a <laughs> Is that right, Groucho? You burn money? I would burn money. We were in Wyoming. <laughs> and we were filming a night at the opera. <laughs> right. Now, Como would wear a jacket. And it was cold out. <laughs> so that's what people would wear. <laughs> when it was cold, a jacket. <laughs> Sometimes... He would eat a sandwich because when people were hungry, they would eat something. It was a sand. You would put something between two pieces of bread and, and make. They would call it back then. It was 1901, and it was called a sandwich. Even back then, it was called a sandwich. It was called a sandwich. Oh, Sometimes we would open a window. Windows were you could look out of them because they had glass, and you could actually. Let me interrupt. You. Oh, you're just talking, Robin. Don't be rude. Senior, he's, father a, of the late he's an American Martin icon. Day, I would say died of pneumonia a at a Southern California. <laughs> Hospital on October 17th, would, Gay, who was sit, 84, it, it fatally was shot his <laughs> son during a heated argument on I, April 1st would, of 1984. Brush my teeth. You're stepping on a legend. Right? <laughs> Dear Devil Just, Parachute, is, is that it brush. again? Parachute. Poor Alex. Rub it up Wait, come and stop for a second there, uh, Groucho. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. He'll ramble forever. <laughs> right. Thor Alex, as he identifies himself, took the elevator up to the 65th floor of New York City's landmark Chrysler building yesterday. He used the fire cord to climb down to the 61st yes. floor. You should do this, Gilbert. You yes. get some attention. <laughs> yes. A New York Post quotes him as telling stunned office workers to relax because he wasn't committing suicide. I would commit then suicide. Then on the 61st floor, he climbed onto an eagle decoration and took the plunge. I attempted suicide. About 20 seconds later, he safely now, made it to the street where he grabbed his gear, hailed a cab, and took off. It's the Norwegian man's second jump in four days. On Saturday, he parachuted from the 86th floor of the Empire State Building. He'd like to do the World Trade Center, but... He says the security there is way too good. That will have to wait. I have his microphone off and he doesn't even know it. A former Florida pastor has been convicted of sexually molesting a Florida teenager. Oh. Ooh, what? The Reverend Joseph Milley hey. has found guilty of felony sexual activity with a 17-year-old. He had claimed, Does she want to buy my book? He had claimed he was checking the girl for virginity. Right. Even though he had no medical expertise. He faces up to 12 years in prison as a first-time offender. He's in jail until his sentencing in about a month. <laughs> Inappropriate loud laughter. Yeah. <laughs> oh, 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 dear. The parrot to you. <laughs> the, parrot? the parrot from that movie. <laughs> All right, let's get on with it. Sharon Stone is going to be the subject Ooh. of an Ooh. e television profile. Oh, Sharon Stone. Today. I, I would, did a movie with Sharon Stone. <laughs> it was 1901. <laughs> it was a silent picture. And that's it. That's my last story today. <laughs> Here is Sharon talking about yes. Uh, yes. doing a fight scene with yes. Arnold Schwarzenegger in Total Recall. Wow. Wow. I had to beat up Arnold Schwarzenegger. She can't even say his name. How, how insulting is this woman? <laughs> Yesterday she probably played a clip of her, how intelligent she is. Yes. She's telling us. Peculiarly intelligent. Peculiarly intelligent, she said. And she goes, Arnold Schwarzenegger. In karate, I trained, I circuit trained, I lifted weights. I was a maniac. Shut up. And so I eventually had to do this, so, you know, karate, throwing him around scene and... Shut up. You had to step out his body. <laughs> but, you know, you do... Shut up. The master from here, the master from there, the coverage from here. And this is a big fight sequence. I was hitting him a lot. Oh. I wasn't hitting him hard because you learn 
in karate, you learn specifically where you're, it will land. But I... Oh, listen to this. You stupid thing. <laughs> but here's Paul Verhoeven, the man who got her to cross and uncross her legs for. Uh, I didn't know. No, that wasn't. Oh him. yes, he did Total Recall. He directed her. Yes. Oh yes, he did. Uh, yeah. Basic Instinct as well. That's right. Yeah. He says uh, this about Sharon Stone. I have not seen anybody in the last twenty years, at least not a woman, that can be so goddamn evil, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. In the movie, and and make it believable. Yeah. And, and as it's charming, mm -hmm. three seconds later. Hmm. Really? So you mean off screen? I think he means only on screen. Mm. And here is uh, Sylvester Stallone talking about doing love scenes with Sharon Stone and the specialist. Hey. Hey. I expect to see, you know, she to come oh. swooping into the room oh. like George oh. the Jungle on a rope oh. land in the bed. Oh. Party time. Party time. Oh. Just the other way. I don't know. Blatant mm. shyness. Yeah. There's yeah. another guy who has that intelligence. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's always telling everyone how smart he is. And now he's a great painter. Sounds like one of those dogs from the uh, city yeah. set. <laughs> <laughs> don't kiss. <laughs> <laughs> and Gilbert, being a romantic, would like oh. to know yeah. how Sharon Stone fell in love with her husband, Bill, uh, Phil Bronstein. Well, this might help Gilbert find a girlfriend. So here's how, uh, what happened while they uh, met in San Francisco. He goes hiking every year by himself. Oh. Ooh. In the mountains, and he called me from this payphone yeah. in the yeah. mountains every night, mm. <laughs> and talked to me about life and books and. Uh, <laughs> what's how serious she get about her love? Yeah. Uh. Really made me laugh and uh. made me think uh. and. Uh. Gilbert, but, you want to talk about how you fell in love? You know what he does? He answers ads for hookers. <laughs> Uh, I was going through the... And I started to realize that I was starting to look forward to him getting back from his trip, mm. which was really bugging me. And then... Mm. Uh-oh. Love. He came back from the trip with wildflowers that he picked on the mountaintop in a plastic cup on the dash of his truck and brought them to the set. Jack off. <laughs> so Don't you talk set. about good <laughs> And he held the flowers in his buttocks. <laughs> Between each cheek was a different daisy. I, I usually leave that out of the story. I, I would like to share that with audiences. <laughs> There are some things that are between two people. And finally this morning, I'd like private. to alert you that Barbara Streisand will oh. conduct her first online chat on November 2nd on America Online. Oh, I would like she to get will her. chat with her friends from her home from 9 yes. to 9.30. She will only answer political questions, though, Robin. You can't ask her anything about her personal life. She will type with her nose. <laughs> Uh, you can join her at AOL.live on www.aol.com. Can I mention my webpage? <laughs> Gilbert, when will you get on the internet? The satellite tapes! <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't have a CD! <laughs> well, oh. I was, that's it? That's it. That's all, that's I all have you time have time for. for. You obviously have an appointment. Yes. Wow. <laughs> Where, where, where are you going? <laughs> yeah, where are you well, going? You tell me something about your personal life, girl. Tell me something about oh, okay. mine. I like women with penises. <laughs> and I like men with uh, flowers in their ass. Go ahead. You go. I'll tell Rato. I mean, I'll tell whoever's here, Gilbert. <laughs> She's in a hurry. Yeah, oh, she is. She told me she's in a hurry. Rato buys a house. Yeah. And uh, he's $70,000. <laughs> And then it turns out, though, when he has to flush the toilet, if people make a number two and they wipe themselves, they have to put the toilet paper in a hamper. Well, Ratsy goes, it's not so bad. I empty it every day. Not so bad. And then I go, what do you mean it's not so bad? He goes, well, because, uh, you know, when you have a baby, you put uh, all that stuff in a you know, you know, you don't put it in the toilet. Oh, my God. You, know, you can't buy a closet for $70,000. I knew there was something wrong with the house. Took a while to find out. Yeah. Imagine emptying out people's duty papers. And he could buy marine toilet paper, which he can put in the toilet, but he won't because it costs three times more than regular toilet paper. People haven't had to do that since the Renaissance. Even you have indoor plumbing, right? 
Well, they gave him the lobster. <laughs> so, so when you go into the bathroom, you have to go... <gasps> Yeah, you have to hold your breath. Yeah. Especially if you go to the bathroom yeah. around 5 or 6 o'clock at night. Especially during the summer. Right, it's really kind of smelly. We got to go there. We got to go to his Field house. Trip. Let's go have a card. Yeah, this is a hamper. Let's eat a lot and then go to this. <laughs> <laughs> triple cheeseburger. Oh. <laughs> we should go ahead and lock the glue the hand close. <laughs> <laughs> What's it doing on the floor? I can't get in. Man. When I heard... supposed to put it in the hamper. <laughs> <laughs> you think I'm a $70,000 house. Why don't... <laughs> Why don't we just throw the toilet paper like on the floor? <laughs> Stick it to the wall. Right? <laughs> it's no pain. Ah, but we... people stick artwork to the wall. It's not so big. That must be some toilet. Oh. I mean, because he was saying to me, he was like, yeah. He goes, it's no big deal. Every night I, I wrap up the garbage and I take all the toilet tissue and throw it out. Oh. You know what that must smell like? Oh. Sometimes I fold it up so we can use the bag again. <laughs> <laughs> I take each paper and I fold it over. Because he goes to me, it's not so bad. <laughs> That's not so bad. Why would you buy a house where you have to, like, put used toilet tissue in a hamper? Girls like it when they stop over. <laughs> yeah, it's like sort of a natural... You know, it becomes almost like a reflex to throw it in the toilet. Of course. Right? Coast Guard arrests me. Is this yours? Mr. Sloman? Uh, is this yours? Wait a second. We found, it? We found it's not mine. We found it. Mr. Sloman, we found something in the, uh, we found something in the uh, water. I we, didn't take it correct. Did you have corn for dinner last night? <laughs> green giant. <laughs> there were no green peas in there. <laughs> we ought to go to that house, man. Let's take a trip out there. I don't buy cashews. Would you go out there, man, as a goof? If we picked you up? Yeah. You'd go. Yeah. <laughs> you would go oh. just to see that? We should all go have a large pizza. And then oh. <laughs> <laughs> What's the pepperoni doing floating in the bay? Because I said to Ratto, I said, how do you get a house for $70,000? He goes, it's fantastic. <laughs> and, and I said, I heard it's in a black neighborhood. No, it's a mixed neighborhood. <laughs> every time we talk yeah, to him. He's white, stuff. everyone else is black. Find something else out every time. Yeah, right. <laughs> Slowly but sure. And then we found out the water just floods in there all the time, and that you can't use the toilet. You can't use toilet paper in the in the uh, in the uh, toilet. Sometimes in the middle of oh, when that floods, oh. it, it wakes me up. It's really a great house. It gives the kids something to play with. <laughs> oh, no batteries needed. <laughs> He has to take a uh, rowboat to get the mail. <laughs> Rosebud. Hey, my mail. Is that a package or another turn? You didn't go to his uh, book reading, did you? Uh, no. No, Red I've been busy that day. Book reading. Rachel put out this book called um, Steal This Dream. Steal This Dream, the story of Abby Hoffman. Steal and I hear this hamper. And I hear their. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking like of making it into a 3D IMAX movie. You have a giant Abby Hoffman come at you. 80 feet. 80 foot high, he burns the American flag on you. The other day, Rats told me he's sitting at home. Cubans rode up to his house. <laughs> El Duque's parents got out of the boat. But you got room. <laughs> Are you El Duque? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a sister. <laughs> What's her name? So. The Cubans saw the bathroom and turned around. <laughs> you don't need these. So that's the Ratso story. They use a hamper, but already the hamper's like half full. It's got to stink, right? I mean, doesn't that smell? It's got to. <laughs> Did you believe it? Oh, we got to go out there, man. The, the, the hamper's got to smell. So it's got to smell badly enough when it's closed, but then right. they have to you open, open it. it. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
<laughs> you have to give people instructions. Yeah, right. Like, it is a sign. Can you imagine the decorating in this house? There's a sign on the back of the door telling you and how to move your rips. bowels. <laughs> Look, I don't mean to be purged. His parents. I gotta tell you something. His parents, his <laughs> girlfriend's parents, all come there. Well, could you imagine? It's better to push when the tide goes out. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care what happens, man. I wouldn't pick up that hamper. I'd just throw my toilet paper in the toilet. Because he says it's like, you go on a boat or in an airplane and then get the special toilets. And it says you can't put down any cloth or anything. So he's going to buy special toilet paper. But he won't buy it. He says it's hard to find, but it's not. He says he's too cheap. His garbage man wants to kill him. He's in an activity. He's in a marine community. You can get this me. What's the big deal? After all, he says, you have a baby. Where'd you throw her the diapers? Oh. And I'm like, well, it's a little different. It's a baby. <laughs> He's just drinking milk. And these are adults. a celebrity. I saved the toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Jerry Rubin was here. <laughs> <laughs> Look, it's Bobby Seal. <laughs> Joe Baez is coming. I'm going to serve barbecue chicken. Eldridge Cooley. <laughs> oh. And he says, I said, so what do you do? You empty out the, the hamper every night? Yeah, it's no big deal to the plastic bag. <laughs> Oh, what a house that must be. Doesn't everybody do that? Because what's the big deal? You do it for a baby. Wait, Howard, right. there is the thing. Because you got to reach the over with one hand right. to open it up. Right. Because you can't reach over with your foot to open a... a Unless little. you open it up first and you leave it open oh, while you're moving. Yeah. <laughs> so you lean over with one hand. With the, oh, you got to avoid everything with your right hand. Yeah. So you don't rub it on anything. Right. It takes practice. <laughs> you must have the whole room painted brown so you can't see. Tight jump shot. <laughs> Just bend your ambidextrous. So I imagine a Magic Johnson and I throw it from across the room. <laughs> he has to come explain the that. The crowd roars. <laughs> As Rancho goes up to the hamper. He shoots it in the basket. Christy, go along. <laughs> I'm going to do a chest pass. Oh. I'm America's hero again. <laughs> Don't make me laugh. I'm going to have a heart attack. <laughs> ah, shoot. Oh. It's at the bottom of the game. Oh. Only one man can save them. Oh, oh. I get out of here, I swear to God. I would, I would end rats on my toilet paper. I dribble the toilet paper and then I shoot. It's <laughs> in the basket. <laughs> we got to go out there. We got him. We gotta go out there. Imagine we're sitting around having dinner and all of a sudden somebody doesn't use the bathroom. We have a problem. Rats almost have to get up every two seconds. <laughs> now I had to hamper all the way across the room. What do you mean it's full? Hey, Gary, get Ratso on the phone. I gotta understand how you open the hamper while you're moving your bowels. There's gotta be an intercom between the bathroom and the rest of the house. Oh, my God. Oh. Oh. Maybe this is an instruction sheet, you know. Oh, my God. Oh. I don't know if I can get him on the phone. But anyway, hey, Gilbert Godfrey. All right, can you give him a quick call. I've got questions. Gilbert Godfrey will be at Caroline's Comedy Club tomorrow and Saturday. To order tickets, call 212-757-4100. I've never laughed so hard in my life. My heart hurts. My ch I have chest pains. It's just incredible. There's nothing funnier than his life. Nothing. Except when Gilbert's in the hospital. <laughs> thinking of giving up comedy. I'm thinking of... Uh, I'm just thinking of I'm really, in the bag. I mean, what's the point? Howard, he's not home. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm sure I'm buying paper. <laughs> Mini paper. <laughs> <laughs> ah. 
All right, let's. Uh, all right, so Gilbert, we know where he's going to be. He's order tickets two one two seven five seven forty one hundred for Caroline's. Jackie Penthouse joke page Martling Thursday November twelfth the Rascals Comedy Club in West Orange New Jersey tomorrow from five to seven p.m. at Strawberries in Avon Connecticut and he'll be signing his new Olio CD Hot Dogs and Donuts for information and filthy animated jokes visit JokeLand dot com. Our thanks to David Wolf. His book, Nature's First Law, is available by calling 888-RAW-FOOD or by visiting rawfood.com. Also on Amazon.com. Thanks to Dr. Johnson, who was abducted by aliens, for coming on the show also. Remember, if uh, Leslie Glass is the penthouse pet who has colon cancer, uh, she needs money to cover her medical bill. She's having a benefit tonight at China Club where you can meet penthouse pets Paige Summers and Nikki St. Gilles. I know you'd like to meet them, Gilbert. Take them over Ratzos. $20 donation requested at the door. Okay, don't miss Stuttering John. His band will be playing Hell Night at Jitterbugs in Edwardsville, Pennsylvania this Friday night. And John's band will be a great adventure in New Jersey this Saturday night, Halloween, promoting his new album. Uh, thanks, Gilbert. <laughs> Vermont Teddy Bear. Vermont Teddy Bear. If I tell you all this stuff, then we'll never get to the news. <laughs> well, <laughs> guess what? Not having these conversations off the air. <laughs> guess what's um, sneaking up this Saturday, Robin? What is Saturday? Uh, Halloween. Halloween. Are you heading to a Halloween party? Bring a Vermont boo boo bear. Because uh, boo -boo bear. the bear goes boo. <laughs> it'll be the boo -boo. it'll be the hit of the party. It also makes a great gift for your date, Gilbert. Call and ask about Dracula Bear. Ah, <laughs> Dracula <laughs> Bear. There's a black cat bear, little devil bear, Franken Bear, which is uh, after Al Franken. Franken Bear, <laughs> Scarecrow Bear, a uh, trick or treat teddy bear. All right, so a boo bear makes a great trick or treat companion for your kids to ward off goblins and demons. I wonder if they have an old senile Groucho bear. I'm a bear. Especially <laughs> a bear with a beret. I eat honey. So these are great <laughs> gifts. Call 1 800 829 B E A R to place your bear gram order today. A bear gram gift is a unique way to deliver a message and make someone feel great. A 1 800 829 bear. They'll even help you with uh, b uh, birthdays, Christmas, uh, get well, anything. I sent Gilbert one of these. When he was in the hospital. Yeah, and I call, sold it. That's right. Call 1 800 829 Bear or shop online at vtbear.com. The Vermont Teddy Bear Company delivering personalized Bear Graham gifts for Halloween and every occasion. That's 1 800 829 BEAR. Ladies and gentlemen, the Martian Ambassador is going to say a few words. You're listening, listening, listening. To the Howard Stern Show. Let's do the plugs and then leave. One more time. Uh, King Norris at a wonderful place called Double D's, I hear. It's uh, it's quite the swinging spot. Uh, King Norris, Friday night at uh, Double D's in Morristown, New Jersey. I understand there's some sort of costume party. I may or may not dress. Period. Uh, CDnow.com, along with Tunes in Allentown, Tower, and H&B in Manhattan, all have the King Norris CD. Uh, Stuttering John is busy on the uh, touring trail. And if you feel so inclined to go out and see his stutteringness, well, it's Everybody's Normal But Me is his new CD. And he's appearing at Jitterbugs in Edwards, PA. Edwardsville, excuse me, Edwardsville, PA. This Friday night. And, of course, Great Adventure on Saturday night. Halloween night in New Jersey. And uh, Mr. Pumpkinhead himself, Scott the Engineer, Rocket Entertainment, the man who sometimes knows how to turn on a microphone and sometimes knows how to turn on a turntable. 718 back 5040, the number for Scott the Engineer and Rocket Entertainment. All right, that's it. We've done enough show. I think, in fact, I think it's. I think we've done 19 hours of show, according to my watch. We'll be back tomorrow. We close our broadcasting day as usual with Nat Lamp onto my feet. Tonight's inspirational message will be delivered by Father Joseph Vizzini. Dominus, kiss your biscuits, folks. How about that? At this time, the Howard Stern Radio Network leaves the airwaves for technical adjustments. Ah!